Hey, good morning. It is good to see you. I'm glad you're here today. I want to let you know before we dive in, in two weeks, we're starting a brand new series called Big Choices. And the reason we're doing this, it actually fits so well. For most of us, we are getting close to kind of going back to normal. And back to normal is a good thing. But the other thing that happens with back to normal is we have a lot of choices to make. And so we want to take a couple of weeks and think through and talk about what are the choices we should be making as our world is changing again. And what do those choices look like? And so I hope you'll join us for that. I hope you'll bring somebody with you. Uh, This is going to be a great time to help gain some clarity, gain some direction about where is my life going and what should my life be about. And so I hope you'll join us for that. Well, today we are still working through our series called Relationship Goals, and as it kind of dawned on me that, you know, for some of you, when I say relationship goals, you may be thinking of something else, because it wasn't that long ago, it's not quite as popular right now, it wasn't that long ago that on social media, everybody would post these pictures, uh, they would post these videos or moments of people that were, you know, this romantic proposal, or this incredible date, or this older couple that's still in love, and then they would hashtag it, relationship goals, and the idea was, that's what I want, that's the kind of relationship I want to have. And, and this kind of became popular to, to tag things that way. And, and I do think, if you're married, that your spouse should be your most important and most devoted human relationship. But the truth is, we have a lot of relationships. And that's kind of what this series came out of, is we have relationships all over the place, and, and we should actually have goals for those relationships. Instead of just being there and hoping they work out all right and crossing our fingers and getting mad when the other person doesn't do what we want them to do or doesn't act the way we think they should act, we can actually be proactive and set up some relationship goals. Where is this thing gonna go? And, and really, probably the very first relationship you ever had, you probably don't think of it very much, <laughs> but it happened even before you were born. You had a relationship. And, and, and we've been able to do studies and see some things that newborns are actually able to recognize both mom and dad's voice, like right after being born. They can already recognize. They were already learning in the womb. Here's another one, moms. Uh, they can actually recognize the theme song to your favorite TV show. So you might want to be careful about what you're watching. <laughs> Baby's going to come out saying yes to the dress or something. I don't know. But um, you, you, the, the children are already learning even before they're born in that relationship with their parents. It's so critically important. And sometimes, oftentimes, we don't really have goals when it comes to the relationship with our parents. And a lot of you, a lot of you, because of your age, because of your world and your situation, you're kind of getting in that sandwich space where maybe you have your own kids or maybe they're, they're growing up or maybe they're kind of almost adults and they're, or, or they are adults, but they're still kind of dependent on you a little bit. And then you've got your parents that you're thinking about them and you're trying to care for them and you're, you're beginning to realize that there's gonna come a time they're gonna need my help. And, and you kind of maybe feel like you're in that sandwich moment of, of not only wanting to invest in your kids and we all have relationship goals for our kids, but also your parents. Or maybe not. Maybe your parents are doing well, but you know there's gonna be a day where it's coming, it's coming, it's gonna happen. And I do admit, I do admit, relationships with parents are complicated. They're complex because they're lifelong, right? It's not like you just shut it off after a few years. You dated somebody and it didn't work out and the relationship goes away. Your parents are your parents as long as you both live. I mean, it's it's a long-term kind of relationship. And I have found that the band Cheap Trick, any Cheap Trick fans here by any... One, two in the back. Everybody else is like, I don't even know who they are, man. That's terrible. I told our worship pastor, I said, this is probably the only church in America that's going to talk about Cheap Trick on Sunday. And he said, you're probably right, because nobody cares. about." They had a song called Surrender. The band Cheap Trick had a song called Surrender. And one of the lines in the song was, mommy's all right, daddy's all right. They just seem a little weird, right? And, and, and the, the, that's the truth, isn't it? As we get older, we look back and we see, you know what? They were right about a lot of things. There, there's things that they said. There's things that they did. They, they were right, and they're also weird. They do some weird stuff. They, they have some weird values. I'm like, why do you care about this? But they do. And when we begin to think about that, it is hard to think, well, what does that relationship look like? And what would a goal in that relationship look like? And unfortunately, for some of us, your relationship with your parents is such that the relationship goal is like just to avoid fighting the next time we're in the same room. Or some of you, it might be just to avoid them. You know, and it, it, it's, that's kind of harsh, but for some of us, that, that's kind of where we are. That's where we're living. And what would it look like to have a relationship goal with your parents? And 
you know, God does what God does. He, he always speaks to things. And, and we've been coming back to this several times throughout the series, but Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it tells us when it comes to relationships, actually when it comes to anything in life, our best bet is not to lean into our own understanding, our own wisdom, our own opinion, our own emotions. And, and here's why. It's not because they don't count. It's because we're so limited, right? We can only see such a small part of the picture. We can only see a very thin slice of our life at any one time. But God sees the whole thing. He sees all of it. And so the writer of Proverbs urges us, he says, don't lean and hold on to what you know and what you've experienced and your emotions only. Rather, rather, trust what God says. Trust what he says. Trust that he sees the big picture. Trust that he loves you. Trust what he tells you. And if you do, you'll find that your life is right. You'll find that you're on the right path, that things move in the right direction. And so when it comes to parents, God actually told us what our relationship goals should look like. It comes right out of Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It's one of the big 10. You've heard of it. Even if you don't go to church, you've heard of the 10 commandments, right? There's, there's 10 of them, and, and people that study the Bible have forever broken them up into two groups. There's the first four, which all have to do with you relating to God. And then there's the second, or the second group is the next six, number five through 10, and they all have to do with how we relate to other people. And the very first commandment that deals with how we relate to other people is about your parents, it says, honor your father and mother that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. In other words, a life honoring your parents provides a full life. That, that's your relationship goal. That's what God says your relationship goal is when it comes to your parents. We teach that to our kids, or at least I did, especially the honor your father part. I really tried to drill that in <laughs> to my daughters. I want you to know this. I want you to understand this. But the truth is, for most of us, we will have a relationship with our parents as an adult much longer than we ever had a relationship with our parents as a child. And it does make sense that there should be some goals here. But again, relationships with parents get kind of complex because they are lifelong. Because things that happen and things that are said and things that are done be hurt, can become hurtful. Because lives tend to move in different directions. And sometimes as they move in different directions, those gaps become very difficult to navigate. Because one's going one way and one's going another and, and there's confusion and upset about why we're not going the same way. And, and God doesn't just give us this thing of honor your parents and leave it there. He actually speaks to how we honor our parents in the book of Proverbs. And so if you wanna follow along, we're gonna look at a couple of Proverbs and Proverbs chapter six is where we're gonna go first. But God loves you and he wants you to have a great relationship with your parents even if it's not great. And some of you may be listening to this and thinking, this doesn't really apply to me. My, my parents have passed. I, I don't really, I can't connect to them anymore. You might be surprised. So hang in there. Hang in there because you can honor your parents no matter what. Because ultimately, and this is, this is probably the key to the whole thing we're talking about today. The choice to honor your parents, to have God's relationship goal for you, is about the choices you make, not about what everybody else does. So Proverbs chapter 6 gets us started, and, and in Proverbs 6, verse 20, uh, we're told to value your parents. And so let's take a look at that. It says it this way, Proverbs 6, verse 20. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart and fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will speak to you. So value your parents. Now, again, like I said, I get it. The relationships are tough. And I know, a crowd this size, some of you are sitting there thinking, there is nothing honorable about my parents. I, I just don't feel like I can. I, I don't even want to. And, and let me challenge you just a little bit on that. I, I don't want to discount what happened to you. I, I don't know your story. And, and if it is one that is difficult, I, I really am legitimately, I am sorry because that's not God's intention for your life. God's intention for your life was you to have a phenomenal relationship with your parents. And if it didn't happen, I, I am. I am so sorry. But sometimes we just make the choice to honor the position, even if we can't honor the person. And, and that's where the heart of what we're gonna talk about today really comes from. This idea of valuing your parents. And again, you, you may see several things right off the bat that, oh, I, I love this, I love that, I love that. But what he's talking about is the wisdom that your parents taught you. And for many of you, you had a great experience. You, you can look at your parents' example, and you really value what they taught you. And that is a way that you honor your parents. That is a way you step into this relationship goal. You appreciate the fact that they sat down and they taught you some really important things. 
You appreciate that, that they showed you what it meant to work hard or to have integrity or how to, how to love each other. They, they really set a great example for you, and you value that. For some of you, though, you have to flip it. You, learn not, you learned what not to do. By watching your parents, you learned what not to do. That's not the way to deal with stress. That's not the way to treat somebody in my family. That's not the way uh, to interact with somebody at work. And, and you learn from them what not to do. It was a negative example, but you still value that because that impacts you. It impacts how you relate to other people. It impacts the person that you are. And so again, maybe it is hard to value them as a person because of who they are or what they did, but you can still value the wisdom you learned from them. When I think about my parents, and they, I, I, I had a, a good situation. I, I really did. And, and I still do. And I can think of hundreds of things I learned from my parents. But one of the things I learned from my dad was about faith and what it meant to follow God. And, and I think as I look back, <laughs> the, the point where it stood out the most, it happened, and, and just bear with me for a second, because I grew up going to church. I actually going to church like minus nine months old. My mom was pregnant, we were going to church, and we, we kept going to the same church, and I went to church every Sunday for like 22 years, the same place. So I literally grew up in church. And this church that I went to is called First Southern Baptist Church of Glendale. It still exists. They've moved and changed their names and all that kind of stuff. But um, they had this big sanctuary like this one, and they had these really long, hard seats called pews. They were awful. They were awful. And there were no screens. You just, the only thing you could look at was the person. It was really boring. It's just, just them. That's it. That's all you got. And they sang out of a book. They would hold up a book and sing and, and, and stuff. And, and I remember sitting in church with my dad, which was horrible for both of us. The, the, the idea of children's church, I don't know why it took us so long to come up with. It is a great idea <laughs> because it was horrible for both of us. There was pinching and poking and ear pulling, and that was just my parents with each other. Uh, but <laughs> there, there was all this stuff going on, and there was the look. I don't know if this generation understands the look. My mom could convey paragraphs in a three-second look. It was how bad you were going to get it, if you were going to have to wait to the car to get it, and what was going to happen when you got home after you got it. And it was, it was something like this. And that was it. The day was ruined. It was over. It's nothing to do with my dad, but you, you should know that. Uh, <laughs> I remember seven, eight, nine years old, sitting on this pew with my family, because that's what everybody did. They just sat as families on these pews. My dad was there every week. And in my mind, in my eyes, my dad never did anything that wasn't important. He wouldn't do anything that wasn't important. He worked nights, and so weekends were tough. He needed to catch up on sleep. But we went to church every Sunday. And he stood up and he sang badly with every song. And as an eight-year-old boy thinking, if this is important to my dad like this, this must be important. I learned the importance of faith from my dad. From my mom, I learned joy. My mom, was, she's one of those, she is quick to smile. She is ready and looking for reasons to laugh. She never takes herself too seriously. And, and, and even though as later in life, most of the time she is physically uncomfortable, she just has a spirit where you know she's just looking for a reason to smile and laugh. And I've known that my whole life. And she taught me about joy. And so I wonder, as you sit here this morning and you think about your parents, what did they teach you that you can value? Even if it came from a negative experience, what did they teach you? Because if you value what they taught you, that is a way of honoring them. So we want to honor our parents. That's our goal. The, uh, another way that we can do that is we can bring joy to our parents. We can bring joy to our parents. And this comes out of Proverbs 23. Uh, Proverbs 23, verse 22. And it says it this way. Listen to your father who gave you life. And do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy the truth. Don't sell it. Wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. The father of a righteous child has great joy. A man who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. So it's pretty obvious. He's talking about you can bring joy to your parents. But it's an interesting way that this happens. It, it, it comes from them being proud of you. And if you're a parent, you know this, you get this. You've had that moment where you're proud of your son or daughter. And it's not because of something they've done, it's because of who they've become, right? You just, and there's nothing else like it. I, I mean, there's so many good things that can happen. You can get a raise, you can get a new job, you can uh, get, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff that come into your life and good things and great things. But there is nothing quite like that moment as a parent where you, I'm so proud of who they're becoming. 
It, there's nothing else like it. You can bring that joy to your parents, even if you're not a parent yourself. You can bring that kind of joy, that kind of healthy pride to your parents. And you do it by becoming righteous. And, and we've talked about this throughout the series, that, that the, the, the right relationships come from being the right person, right? It's not about what everybody else does. It's not about the culture. It's not about the situation. It's not about the money. It's not about this or that or the other thing. The right relationships you're looking for, they come from you being the right person. That's how it happens. So simple then, right? If I want to bring joy to my parents, then I just need to be righteous. <laughs> how do I do that? Can I do that? And the short answer to that is no, not on your own. No, you can't. You can't do that by yourself. One of the things that we learn as we read about and understand who Jesus was and what it means to follow Jesus is that Jesus says that when we become a follower of his, he declares us righteous. He sets us right with God. And a lot of times, people that go to church a lot, we understand that. Right, we get that. Okay, I understand it. There was that moment, that time. Um, maybe you prayed a prayer, or maybe somebody kind of walks you through something, and you you realize, well, Jesus is giving me this gift, and and if if I receive that gift, then that means He's going to save me, and that that is true. But sometimes we leave out the rest. You see, salvation does happen at a day and a moment in time. But being a follower of Jesus is an everyday thing. That's what the gospel is. Because I've received this gift, I now follow Jesus actively. This wasn't an insurance policy that I signed and checked a box. This is a lifestyle of following him. And what happens when I do that is the spirit of God comes to live in my heart and it changes me. I become a different person. I've not only been declared righteous, he is making me righteous. I am being transformed. And so, yes, I have that day of salvation, but I also have a new life every day. If you want to bring joy to your parents, it's about who you become. And the only way to become righteous and bring that healthy pride to your parents is to become a follower, an active follower of Jesus, and then let him go to work within you. Because that will bring joy to your parents, which honors your parents. There's, there's one more thing that we can do, one more step that we need to take when it comes to, to honoring our parents, and it comes out of Proverbs 10. In Proverbs 10, verse 12, it's a, it's a very short but incredibly powerful verse. The way we honor our parents, maybe the best way we honor our parents, is to love our parents, to love our parents. Proverbs ver, chapter 10, verse 12, says it this way. Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Love covers over all wrongs. I, I know that for some of you, it just feels like it's too hard. It's too far. That, that I, I, my goal is just not to go off when I'm around them. That's my goal. But God says, I understand your pain. I understand your frustration. I understand that your parents let you down. And I understand that you feel like they could have done so much better and so much different and they should have and they could have and they didn't. And God says love covers over. And I, I love this word, it, this word that says covered over. It literally means to place a blanket or a quilt on top of. It just covers it over. And I know the pushback. I know the pushback. You don't understand. And it, it's not right to deny what they did. And that's, that's not what covering it over means. It, it, you know, I can't pretend it didn't happen. That, that's not what covering over means. It, it hurt me. And you think the pain's going to go away. That's, that's not what covering it over means. It's not to pretend. It's not to deny. It's not to justify. It's not to rationalize. It's not even to make up for what they did. You see, because the only person that can make up for what they did is Jesus. Just like Jesus is the only person that can make up for what you have done, for your failures and your falling short and, and, and you're missing the marks. Jesus is the only one that can make up for those too. To cover it over means to choose love instead of hate and to choose to overlook, not because it didn't happen, not because it didn't hurt, not because it doesn't matter, but because instead I'm going to choose love. I know in my case and probably in yours, Every one of us has a parent who failed in some aspect 
even the best parent has failed somewhere. Because that's what we do. And no matter how great and no matter how hard you try, if you're blessed and fortunate to have kids and raise kids, guess what? You're going to fail too. But love, love covers over. Love put a bl- puts a blanket over that and says instead of stirring up the resentment again, instead of walking down that same painful path again and again, instead of bringing it up the next time I see them, waiting for an apology I'm not going to get, I'm just going to cover it over. I'm just going to choose to love. And one of the best ways I can honor my parents, one of the best ways I can hit that relationship goal that God has put in front of me is to choose to love my parents. Ultimately, to forgive to forgive. And, and forgiving means a lot of things. Forgiving means first to release it. To just, I'm not, I, I gotta let it go. I can't keep carrying this around. I can't keep holding this in clenched fists. I, at some point, I have to just, I gotta release it. I have to let it go. But forgiving also means to refuse resentment. That I'm not gonna go off in my mind every time they walk in the room. I'm not going to get mad every time I see him on the phone or every time I get a text. I, I'm not going to allow myself to be filled with resentment because of what happened. I'm going to choose to cover it over. And then I'm going to remember that I can forgive because I've been forgiven. See, if I'm a follower of Christ, it is the love of Christ that has filled me. It is the complete free forgiveness of Christ that has changed me, that has given me grace. And, and then it is my opportunity to turn around and extend those things to other people. Because I've been loved so lavishly, because I've been forgiven so freely, that's how I can cover over the most painful things and make a choice to love, make a choice to forgive to let go, to refuse to be resentful, and to remember to forgive, no matter how painful it is. And again, I I hope that your story is one of great experiences and great memories and a fantastic relationship with your parents. You still need to honor that and honor them. And it could be that your story is one that is filled with heartache and difficulty and strain and stress and emotional trauma. You still need to honor your parents. And the reality is most of us are somewhere in between. We're somewhere in between. And we still have the opportunity to honor our parents by choosing to love them, by bringing them joy by who we become, and by valuing what we've learned from them. I had an opportunity, as I was getting ready uh, to share this message with you, to talk to some of the folks in our church that have been in a relationship with their parents for well over 40, 50, 60 years to find out what have you learned what, what, what would you say? What would you tell people that are kind of working through this idea of having a relationship goal with their parents? What would you tell them? And, and, and I want to share with you a couple of the quotes because I thought there were just so much wisdom in this as people that have kind of figured some things out were willing to share with us. First one said this, as my parents have aged, I find I have to be very proactive about communication because the roles have reversed. I am helping take care of their financial decisions, their medical issues, even doing simple things like picking up prescriptions or taking them to the doctor, the things they did for me when I was a child. Another one, I fight through guilt at times. I wonder about the right decisions because I know they are depending on me. I want to honor them, and I want to use this season of life as a way to teach my kids and my grandkids what it looks like to love and honor your parents, even when it's difficult. Another one said, God is teaching me. (laughs) God is teaching me to care for others without resenting them. Sometimes their words can be hurtful. Sometimes they don't appreciate what you're trying to do for them. But I have to choose to see them as the caring and generous people that they are, to be patient and compassionate (laughs) like this, even when I answer the same question dozens of times. Some of you asked the same question dozens of times too, remember? (laughs) Last one. I'm going to be in their shoes one day. I want to be respectful in my attitude. I want to have a servant's heart. I also need to tell my kids what my wishes are. I need to be willing to ask for help. And I need to put as many things in place now as I can to make it easy for them. I thought those were just some really wise words that are very, very practical because for a lot of us, that's exactly where we live. I don't know what your situation is. 
Maybe, as I said, you've got a great relationship. Maybe it's a strained relationship. Maybe your parents have even passed. But you still have the opportunity to honor them. So what I want to do is I want to pray with you, and then I want to talk about some practical steps that you can take. Let's pray together.